Hello, hello. So uh, I shouldn't have really been doing this this last few hours, but you can't really control what you end up trying to do. So I've had a quick look through the comments. There's a couple of uh, a couple of helpful ones. Thank you for everybody who commented. Lpbk.net. Uh, you should check out the YouTube link. Uh, the, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, this person has uh, a, a bank of uh, Strouders functioning and also uh, Diver Divertical, which I'm actually still I'm actually figuring out how to use because I. I uh, I've got one and I'll be doing video on that rather soon. It's been donated and it's been, yeah, yeah bloody awesome. But uh, yeah, uh, they mentioned this is a 4,000 type group selector which would have handled one of the digits from the phone number but not the last two. Uh, that's the final selector. So yeah, this isn't a final selector. Um, I guess because having a look at the pictures I had sort of made sense because this has got three banks of uh, yeah, selectors. Uh, when you dial a six, it will step vertically as you described, but then it will drive horizontally on its own, looking for a free piece of equipment to handle the next digit. It may be possible to to make it move under control of a phone quite easily, but describing how to do that on YouTube is quite a, is quite is, is a big deal. So yeah, um, I mean, so far I've actually got it to move. Uh, there's, I'm, I'm doing the baby steps, baby steps, that's, that's what I do, but you know, sitting around and figuring it out. So I've managed to get it powered around the back and I don't move it and in another video I'll show you around the back because there's crocodile clips in the, on the pins that uh, need the power. It's powered by um, 48 volts, but I don't actually have a 48 volt power supply so it's only been powered by a... Uh, 30 volts right now, but it seems to work fine. I've, I, I, I surprisingly, I, I haven't got a rotary phone or anything, so I took this from the, uh, from that uh, one that I've done a video on recently, uh, a while back. I've still got to figure that out, but I guess all of this. So yeah, I've sort of got, so I've sort of been going down this. So I'll probably figure out the blue machine because uh, that divertical, which was donated by a fellow called Chris, who actually awesomely showed me around the uh, local telephone exchange, it sort of flicked a switch in my head, going, "Yeah, this is cool. I didn't know anything about this kind of stuff," and it sort of sent me off on a on a whirlpool of an, uh, you know, I'd, if I did, I need, I don't need any more things to be curious about, but alas, hopefully by the time I'll get another bit, the bottom part, the switching part, and then maybe you never know. So yeah, I managed to get it working with uh, this rotary phone. I think this uh, front patch bay, maybe a test panel or something like that. I should probably definitely be looking into this a bit more. I'm not sure what that means. If I go with the full hog, I'll go for zero. Uh, so we're clicking over zero. <laughs> Obviously it only clicks along one and that's because I haven't figured out uh, how to make it uh, scrub for um, a free space in its switch bank. It hasn't got any switch banks but apparently you can trick it to do it. And also if you put your phone down, boom, reset. Let's get a closer shot of this, see what's going on. So let's type in six. Um, if you keep on typing, it doesn't do anything because it's already it's already carried on. Uh, so if you try and do more, it doesn't do it because it's already carried on, which is quite good. So if this is the only Strouger I ever end up with, uh, I'll probably end up just uh, finding the switch bank and using it maybe like a sort of jukebox in a way, potentially. It could be, you know, like a synth jukebox or something. So what it would do is you would... Um, uh, well, let's reset it. I'd, I'd wire it up to a rotary phone, for instance, and uh, basically just have zero to ten, uh, one to ten uh, different things for it to choose. I'm not sure what it would choose. Maybe different sounds or something. I'm I'm not sure. But you could use this as like a, a routing for a patch for a patch bay, like a set, a, like an automated patch bay. The problem is, it would, right now it only really would be able to only adjust between zero and then flick over to like, yeah, it would only have 10 options, but you could have three different um, uh, banks. So I need to find the switch cradle, I guess it's called, and then wire it up. So yet again, I'm talking about alien gear that I haven't got a clue about. This is like landed to me. This is landed in here from Mars. I ain't got a fudging clue, but it looks like there's some relay logic, which is quite obvious and that's talking to this. So we type it in zero again. And then it flicks over to the next part of the logic, or maybe, or maybe it's the switch. Maybe the switch stops it from being able to be advanced by um, any more numbers. But it's really cool. Uh, also, you could use this to maybe advance a, a relay sequencer, like the relay sequencer I've been building. 
So, so the relay sequencer right here, like you could use the rotary phone to potentially uh, control that. But the plan would be is just to get my head around this a little bit and hopefully use the understanding from this uh, to further on the relay sequencer, relay beat step pro idea that I've got. And you never know, maybe at some point uh, happen stance on some more, you know, strouger things because they're just generally fan fascinating. So yeah, definitely I'll be wiring this up to a phone. So let's have a quicker, closer look at the patch bay. Oh. I found a couple of interesting web websites. I read through it. Uh, that's where I found the uh, the uh, power at the back. Really cool. So I've got the uh, the switch wired between these two pins. Uh, that is a uh, one, two, three, four, or the other way around. And that seems to do advance it along. And then if we get the uh, earth, if we send this to ground uh, from this uh, part, which has got this uh, test fuse in it, it just goes back to zero. So oh yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's so cool. Ah, oh, you can actually. So the next thing apparently I need to hunt down is something called a P wire, private wire, kind of letting know what's what what's going on. And then maybe even if that's even any point, because the cool it's, it does the thing, it'll just be cool to get it to um scrub through and I figured out what kind of part in the relay logic uh, is sort of in charge of the uh, scrubbing to see uh, where where a free line is. Basically, if I just uh, wire this up. By the way, if you just wire this up, you can still dial it, and it will just it'll flick down. But if if you uh, dial it up, hold on to the bottom two for a tiny bit. Uh, stop these two from switching uh, back up again for a second. So if you uh, wait for it to do its thing. Stop these from going over. They'll actually select through and see which one is actually empty. So I've got to figure out uh, what that correlates to. I haven't got any uh, any any drawings or anything of this yet. But it does it really quick. That's pretty like. You got to do. You've got to push it down and then lift it up before it gets to the end, or it just it just locks up. What happens is it, it gets to the end and then the uh, the tran the relay logic gets a bit confused. Oh, I've done it a bit slow. Now it gets stuck and it gets confused. So that's not good. So that's not what we want. And then I'm not sure what this light does. Whenever I move it around, it seems that I think that's an alarm for something. And I'm trying to, I'm not sure what it is for. Is it a, some sort of, and so there's, so there's another question. Something funky. No, now it's gone. It's gone. So we got to figure out what that is. And yeah, how to potentially Oh. So yeah, I've got to try and find uh, some sort of diagrams of this kind of thing, get to the bottom of it, and then figure out uh, what to actually do with it, uh, whether to make it musical, <laughs> in what way. Uh, maybe, to be honest, if I could get it to do its scrubby thing, potentially, potentially it's musical. Yeah. It's cool, it's cool, it's definitely cool. It's not the most craziest thing, but this isn't a telephone museum, it's more about like Simpson stuff. So it's nice to have it around, and potentially this might be enough. If I can get the private line to go that might be it for this. And then hopefully one day I'll be able to track down a little bit more complete of a Stroud kind of switch set. That'll be blooming awesome. But yeah, definitely on the hunt for the, for the cradle. For the cradle, how cool is that? How cool is that?